Hi, I'm Steve Rosales, and welcome to this edition of Belmont Bulletin. It's Friday, what is it? It's the 23rd of June, the second day of summer. Yes. And it's, uh, you know, 60 degrees outside and rainy. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so much for climate change. But in any event, uh, we are joined here today with Belmont's town administrator. She's been here for a while, Patrice Garvin. Thanks for joining us again this morning, Patrice. Thanks, Steve. Good to be here. You look, you look all summery dressed in yes. your white outfit. Yes. I've got my, uh, I don't know, salmon colored tie. Don't call it pink. I'm wishing for summer. Wishing for summer. They say this week's supposed to maybe get there. So uh, hope so. We'll, we'll see. That'll be good. So um, all right. So we'll roll right into it. So we're by town meeting. That took a whole bunch of sessions. But it was nice to be live again. It was. And uh, I think people, we, we were in the new auditorium. Yeah, beautiful. And the seating was comfortable and it was air conditioned. Didn't and, make noise. You know, didn't make <laughs> noise. And well, you're up in the front, so you did not have the joy of having sort of the sprung, <laughs> springs sort of jamming right. into your butt. That, that was, I sort of missed that. <laughs> <laughs> we can order in. But we got through that, so. That's done, that's over. Yep. We got through the budget, we got through the thing, budget we have done. a budget. Uh, but as soon as one ends, you plan for the next one. We start planning for next year. So yeah. there's one coming up in fall, a town meeting in fall. We do have a fall town meeting coming up. Um, Give us a, a preview of, uh, it's not set yet, but, but no, what, definitely do think, not what, set are, yet. what do you think's gonna be sort of on that agenda? So once the board kind of prioritizes, one of the things I'd like the board to do over the summer is prioritize what what they'd like to bring to town meeting in the fall. Um, what we're looking at is really some zoning changes that the board is looking to um, help and you know promote economic development. There's been a lot of discussion about looking at the restaurant uh, zoning bylaw to see if there's any changes we can make to, to get the businesses in uh, into town a little easier and quicker. Um, but that requires a zoning uh, bylaw change. There's been discussion of um, potentially maybe having uh, places in town that would allow a hotel. I know that that has been talked about in the past. So that is another bylaw that is looking to be discussed. So there's a lot of bylaw, um, economic development in particular, that we're going to be looking at to bring to the fall, for the fall town meeting. Okay, so we have that. So, well, it's always sort of been a, uh, I guess, a bone of contention, just as a practical matter for me. I, I, I don't own a restaurant, but I've represented applicants for restaurants mm -hmm. uh, in the town going through that uh, Byzantine process. It's like pulling teeth. And uh, I've often asked others, you know, what is the most favorable? What is the easiest way? What is the most welcoming mm -hmm. community around? And it's certainly not Belmont, which has a perception, perception being perhaps reality, that, that Belmont is, is unfriendly to business in some fashion. Yeah, I know that that perception is um, out there. I do think it starts with the bylaw and it starts with the zoning. And I do think that if the town is able to pass zoning um, at town meeting, it those those challenges might um, go away. I think, you know, as you know, zoning bylaw changes at town meeting requires a two-thirds vote. Well, it's a tough one. And there's a lot of factors. There's a lot of intricacies in a zoning uh, bylaw presentation. Unfortunately, the town right now doesn't have a town planner. That brings another um, level of challenge. Uh, the planning board, in terms of its membership, is quite new. So I do think that once the board, the select board, starts to talk about what they want to bring to the fall town meeting, we can start to move that agenda forward. Well, that's good. You just need to pro quicken the process. I'm not saying to, I guess for lack of to quote, dumb down the process or to lower, mm -hmm. lower standards. We want clean, you know, efficient, yep. safe restaurants and businesses, obviously, sure. in town. But the process, the time it takes to, to get these things to go through all of the various channels, mm -hmm. Um, is 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 uh, very difficult for someone who wants to open a restaurant to decide Belmont versus say Watertown, which seemingly sure. can open a restaurant. So as you know, town, town as you know, each town has its own set of zoning that's, bylaws, that's my and point. right. So I think it's really an opportunity for town meeting to try and um, make some changes there. So okay. we'll see what happens. Especially in this uh, environment where we, we need to sort of expand our commercial base commercial, as yes. best we can. Yes. We're predominantly a uh, residential community. That's where we get our tax base. So any, any additional economic development will help the town. Well, having, having been here for a long time, I just received my tax bill. It, was, it crossed a new threshold. Every time I get one, it seems to cross another. Yeah. <laughs> Un 
unpredictable, never would be reached threshold, but it's, yeah. it's been reached. So any type of relief that we can give the taxpayers sure. would be welcome. So we have that. We have, uh, what well, I'm seeing, uh, what's happening with the McLean? I think uh, that's starting to go forward, the McLean development? Yes, so the developer is about to receive his building permit. They should be receiving it by the end of this month, the month of June, and then construction will start. Most likely, it'll, it's the first phase of the project. There's two phases, one being the, uh, the garden unit resi uh, residential building, which is 110 units, and then there's some market rate condominiums. That's phase two. So he'll be receiving his building permit for phase one, and it looks like to be an 18-month build, um, and that will start up on the McLean site. So that'll bring additional revenue into the town um, at some point. And that's a two-step, that's a two-phase two process. Two phase second process. phase to be, do you know if the building permit for the second phase is, it will be issued at the same time, or is it? No, is it's that just the first phase. Application? No, based on the, the permit and what they received from the town, they had to build the first phase. They had to build the apartment complex first because that has the affordable housing component. Okay, that's that's fair. All right, and so that that's going to issue and we yeah. should see some shovels in the ground. Yeah. That, that was a project, I mean, when I first got here five years ago, we started working on this project. So it shows you how long it takes sometimes projects to kind of move through a community to finally get a building permit to start building. So it, it's a, it can be a long process. There's a lot of regulatory aspects to any development, as you know, in town. Okay, and there still is, so once that gets done, if my memory's correct, and on, a, on an ancillary topic, but related, is that there's still a chunk up there in the McLean parcel, if you will, that's zoned for some type of R&D or some yes, type of commercial use. That is what no, is known, excuse me, as zone four. Currently, zone three is going to be what we were just talking about is zone three. Zone four is zoned for R&D. So it's, it's, well, I've often wondered, and I think, well, how is it that we can't, we meeting the town, and it's not aimed at you, it's just a general sure. thought that, that somebody can't recruit somebody to say, look, this is a world-renowned campus on a beautiful wooded area, serene, very mm -hmm. nice, but it's zoned for this. You, you're, you've got to have some type of related research. I'm looking at Watertown, which everybody tells me is all lab space going everywhere. Mm -hmm that you can't attract a business to go on that spot if you tell them you can build to this height or this size and this spot and, and find somebody to do that. So one of the things the board has been talking about, um, and especially as we're looking at an operating override next year, is someone to come in to kind of push the economic development initiatives such as that. Um, we are looking at potentially putting in a position of some sort to support economic development within the town. So that, that hopefully will go into an override budget. And then hopefully with a successful override, we'll be able to push that forward. Okay. Well, well you've mentioned the O word, or what you'll call the O word, the, the override. We've been talking about it for a long time. So we have. Uh, it seems to be something that's going to be coming to the fore. Any idea as to a timeline or what, what that's going to take? Shh. I know it's in the formulative stages, but what yeah. can you tell us about that? So I'll be getting together with a core group um, of representatives from the school committee, select board, uh, warrant committee this summer. We're going to be mapping out a timeline between now and really the end of the year and the override. An override will be most likely either March or April of next year. So that's obviously not a lot of time when you're looking at um, planning for um, a budget of the size of Belmont's. So we'll be working from really now until the end of the year to get two budgets done, one with an override and one without. And that's really going to be what's communicated to the community. Um, there's some things we need to have in place. We need to have our free cash number in the fall, which we usually get in the fall of, of, any, of any calendar year. So that's going to be helping us decide what the final amount of the override would be. And there will be a plan put in place and given to the community. And then also a plan, if the override fails, what we'll do. The town has a significant deficit. It's operating in a $10 million deficit. We worked on FY24, which the town meeting just passed, and we work to sustain and keep all of the, all the services that the town provides. As, as we move towards using one-time money and that one-time money going away, it's going to impact services unless we have uh, an override. So that's what we're going to be working on over the next six months, is a timeline, deliverables, communicating to the public, things like that. Well, okay. Well, we'll keep our eyes out on that. I can say that from my viewpoint, it's easier, and I've, I've voted for them 
I've lived here a long time, I owned a property house here a long time. Um, <clears throat> that it's easier, at least for me, Steve Rosales, to vote for something if I know what I'm buying. Sure. We had our override, oh, a zillion years ago for trash. Mm -hmm. But we knew that was for trash, yep. and that's what we were buying. Yeah. So it seems to me that if you had an override that says, we are going to do, if this passes, this will get done, whatever this may be. Fix the number of roads, fix the sidewalks, um, you know, uh, build a rink, uh, do something with the light department building. I mean, yep. I, I don't know, a, a, some type of an identifiable use of that money, as opposed to just throwing it in for the heat bill. That, that does, that's not as appealing sure. to me to pay the heat bill as it is to say, you know, if I vote for this, they're going to fix the streets. I, I think <laughs> what, what the community needs to understand is if an override doesn't pass, there won't be any heat because we wouldn't be able to afford to pay it. I, I think a lot of the override is really just to pay the bills because of the size of the deficit. We've been using a lot of one-time money over the last few years without an override or with you know, new development, we have no new recurring revenue. So I think we need to communicate to the community that yes, we're going to be building in some additional services, hopefully in the override budget, but it's also about keeping the services that we currently provide. Okay, well, we'll keep, we'll keep, uh, that's such pleasant news. Let's, let's turn to something <laughs> a little more pleasant. Well, it is the summer, the calendar that says yep. the summer. So we've had a couple of things. Uh, the playgrounds, Townfield Playground. I saw yes. little kitties on it, and I saw yep. people playing some pickleball. Yep. I saw some kids playing some basketball. Yep. That's just brand new, right? Just open. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. It's a testament to the staff and town meeting, you know, putting the resources forward, the community preservation committee um, that allows those funds. It, it's really a testament to um, really good use of, of some taxpayer dollars in the community. It's beautiful. I hear, I heard there were Tons of kids there yesterday and families, so. Well, build it, they will come. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, I guess it's up to date with all the safety standards, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. I mean, I was in the Stone Age, apparently, when I grew up, because they had the jungle gym, just yep. the jungle gym on top of the hard top. And if you I, fell, I you remember, fell the hard top, I, I remember the metal <laughs> jungle gyms. That's the way it goes. <laughs> the metal um, seesaws. <laughs> the little whirly gig that would, you know, yep. make you nauseous, but. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yep. But, so get down to the Townfield Playground. That's uh, down there on uh, yep. Beach and uh, Waverly, right? Isn't yep. that what it's it gorgeous. is? It's gorgeous, absolutely it's, it's brand new. Bring your pickleball paddles, I guess, right? Pickleball, yeah. Uh, basketball, and uh, it looks pretty inviting. Yep. Meanwhile, there's another one being built. I think they broke ground on it, the uh, Payson Park. Yep, that is correct. Yep, so that'll be, you know, under construction, and I, I, I have no doubt it'll be just as beautiful. You don't have any idea off the top of your head as to timeline on that. No, I'd have to I'd have to speak to the no, DPW that's fair. But I, I I've seen some some workers up there. I think yeah. they've broken ground yeah. and whatever that yeah. project is, that's underway. Yeah, I think that you know we've been able to with CPC funds really address the the public parks and playgrounds in town, and they're they're well utilized and used. So well, that has the playground. So you know when the weather gets warmer, unless you like to swim in. 60 yep. degree, you know, cold, clammy weather as we have today, but the Underwood pool is set to open. The pool is opening. I, we hope to have it open this weekend when it corresponds with hopefully some warm weather. Um, and it'll be open throughout the summer. Uh, Brandon Fitz, the recreation director, does an amazing job down there hiring staff, lifeguards. It's, it's a real asset to the community and, and families really seem to enjoy it. Well, I've seen, I guess, the staff being trained down yes. there, at least as I drive by. Yep. Uh, it seems to me that the lifeguards and whatever the summer staff is seems to yep. be doing We've been really training. lucky this, this year. I know there's a lot of other towns and D.C. are pools that are having trouble um, attracting lifeguards. So we are really um, ahead of the curve on that. Do you think they're mostly Belmont, Belmont Indians? Belmont. I think there's a lot of repeat um, lifeguards that come back every year. Okay. Well, that's fine. If you so anybody interested in that, you would contact the rec department. Rec department guess, right? for pool passes and some information on the pool. Okay, and that's at uh, I don't know Belmont Dash MA dot gov. Click around for recreation. I guess recreation. Yep. And there you have it. Or I suppose put <laughs> in the search bar pool. I yes. assume that's what will pop up. That's what will pop up. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> yeah. So well, that's that's something good. Uh, 
All right, so we have other stuff going on here. We have uh, the rink, the rink passed. We have money for a rink uh, or the rink and municipal recreation facility or whatever the official name yes, now is. Yes, that's right. So uh, what can you tell us about that? So the rink has a, permanent, uh, has a building committee and they have been working um, with their OPM. They're currently looking for a um, contract construction manager I know the, the committee is actively doing interviews and RFPs for that. The rink is set to be demolished this summer, so that will be a big project given it being Concord Ave and all that goes on down there. So the rink will be demolished in the summer and then hopefully plans for the Whitefield House will be shortly after that in the beginning of December. We want to allow um, the playing organizations to be able to utilize Whitefield House through the fall and then that will be um, demolished as well. And then after the fall. Somewhere, after the fall. Somewhere after the fall. Yeah, after the fall. Okay, so football, soccer, whatever the fall sports Whatever the fall sports is, are, they will I be think supported. It ends somewhere around uh, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, I believe. Thanksgiving. Yep. Yep. So okay. the rink is moving along and that will be con constructed once that, you know, starts get, is demolished and then the library right across the street um, will also be being set to be demolished and rebuilt. So there's a lot going on on Concord Ave. So uh, what's the timeline for that, if you know? I mean, I, I know everything is sort of... From my, I think the you know, library personnel will be vacating the library sometime in the fall, and they will find temporary space. We've been working with the library uh, department and the trustees on temporary space for the library staff and, and the services that they provide. So we've been helping them out with that. That is set to happen. Um, in the fall, so demo demolition will happen and occur sometime after that. They do have to, both buildings have to go through the regulatory process, they have to go to the planning board, they have to get their permits and things like that. So there's a process already kind of baked into that. So most likely a lot of the action is going to be happening at the end of this year and the beginning of next year. Okay, and it has to go through planning board and all those types yep, of things. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay, and so any idea where the library is going to go or where the space is going to be? So we've been working with them. There's a, you know, we're looking at, um, you know, any space that's really available. So everyone's really kind of helping out and trying to chip in to help the library during a two-year two-year build. Uh, we've looked at use of the Benton. That's the library that's um, in town. We've looked at the schools and any space they've been, they could provide, given now that they're going to be reshifting. Uh, kids around mm -hmm. given the new opening of the school. Uh, we've looked at this building, we've looked at Homer. It, we are, one of the things that Belmont is consistent with is it, it's a challenge to find space. And uh, we're just working with them to try and, and get that space for them. This storage, obviously, we're helping them out with that. The police mods down at the DPW. I was going to say, what happens to those? Yeah. I know they're not big, enough. well, maybe they are, maybe they're not. It housed the police station temporarily. It did, and right now we're using it for storage. There's a lot of storage needs in town, especially given the taking down the White Field House, things in the library um, that also have to be stored. So we're looking at that for more of the storage needs. Otherwise, you have to pay for storage, which you know we're trying to save as much money as we can. Hmm. Okay, so we'll, we'll save the, the, the traffic uh, <laughs> and where everybody's going to go and how we're going to get from point A to point B for another day. That's... Well, I think one I of the things... I won't you with that today, <laughs> but unless you want to say something... No, the only it. thing I would say is I know there's been a lot of conversation about why we're taking the Whitefield House down, and honestly, it's, it's really to preserve as much parking on Concord Ave as we can. You're going to have now the school being finished, two construction projects with construction workers, and it, I think it, we really need to focus on parking down there and, and how it's going to be managed. You don't want to really push it off too much into the side street because then, you know, residents are going to be, you know, obviously concerned about that. So I think taking down the White Field House allows better access in and off the site as they rank the as they build the rink. So the White Field House is kind of critical to that piece of it. Okay. Well, as an aside, I watched them rip up the quote temporary parking lot at the new high school. I heard. They probably should have just left. Um, yeah, I mean those are decisions that the building committees make, um, unilaterally of of, well, I think the town okay. should have some influence on that, if knowing that you yeah, need some parking, and there it is. Except now they ripped it up. I think, yeah. I mean, I've heard conversations on both ways of, of people that were for or against the removal of that temporary parking. No. All right. Uh, it's summertime. So, on-street dining. 
I've seen outside dining down at the summit. Yep. <laughs> weather, weather notwithstanding. Such exciting outside dining weather. But what's, what's the feedback on that? How's that working out? Good, bad, or indifferent? So that started, as you know, with COVID mm -hmm. and, and people desire not to eat indoors. Um, we kind of knew from a, a desire from the restaurant's perspective to have additional seating outside. So we kind of knew that with or without COVID, there was going to be um, a push to try and have this every year. I will say that the only, I've, I've heard nothing but positive feedback. The only negative feedback is really from other businesses that aren't restaurants um, in those areas that really want the parking on Leonard Street. As you lose parking with, with the barriers. And even though there is a parking spot in the back, which is Claflin, I, I think people like the on-street parking in Leonard Street. When CVS was in its old location, you know, we really tried to make efforts to get as much parking in front of CVS as we could because we realize there are elderly people that are traveling to the, to the site and need to get out and, and don't want to walk you know, all the way down Landed Street to get to wherever they need. So I think those are the, the things. I mean, it's still, it's still a transition. You know, The state extended the outdoor dining another year. Um, it has a lot to do with the liquor license, which I, I won't bore you with, but um, we'll see what happens next year and, and whether or not the board and the state allows us to continue to allow for the outdoor dining. Uh, one of the questions I also received was, well, why can't we just put the outdoor dining on the sidewalk? And there's ADA you know, issues with that. You can't impinge, um, infringe on people's ability to walk up and down the sidewalk. And if you're disabled, um, it's, you would really get into a problem with that. So the only option is to go into the street, which is to take up the parking spots. And that is generally what we hear around town, uh, all around town with, with any outdoor dining it's the parking spaces, and they're limited in town. So. Well, that they are. So, uh, you know, it's, it's always something, as they say. What was that on Saturday Night Live? Roseanne, Roseanne, Dan. Yeah. It's always it's something. Always something. <laughs> so. I mean, I think that as, as we try to make changes in the community and, and try to make them positive, sometimes there are unintended consequences that some people view as negative, and we just try to work. Work what's best for everybody. I think that's how we have to approach everything. What works for the most people? And that's generally how the board and, and I usually approach things. Well, you know, parking is always seemingly the, the, one of the big things that we got to deal with. So uh, yeah, I think it's know, a balance. It's got to be a plentiful, convenient parking. Yeah. I'm looking at those vacant spaces, the old Comellas, the old CVS, mm -hmm. the old what, Babe, uh, Bank of America. Those are all vacant. And... Uh, Got to get if anybody buys them. I assume they want to have some people be able to get to them. Sure. Yep. So, so uh, it's a balance. It'll all work out. Yep. And every year we improve it a little bit more. But in the meantime, we can enjoy some outdoor dining. Yes. That's, that's pretty nice. That's right. so people seem that's to enjoy nice. it. That's pretty nice. And uh, Comella's just got approval from the uh, Board of Appeals to have outdoor dining added to their new yep. space down uh, on uh, what's that? Blanchard or Brighton Street. Brighton Street. Yep. Brighton and Hinton. Mm -hmm. So uh, look for that. And. Uh, Go enjoy some of that outside dining there, too. So uh, there you go. So let me see. We've got uh, a few minutes left. So we have a new HR director and a new treasurer that yes. I think are just just on the job, or at least just coming in or have come in. Or <laughs> yep. Tell us about uh, these new people. So our HR director, um, Kelly, she started, when did she start? The 26th she started. And that that... That position has been um, vacant since October. So that's really a um, wonderful addition. Uh, Kelly is just started. She brings a lot of energy. Staff really has responded to her. They really seem to like her. And I think she brings a lot of knowledge and experience. Uh, previously, she was in the town of Norwood. And yeah, she's, she's been doing great. Um, so that really takes a lot off of my office's plate because we, we had assumed a lot of that uh, work. So. Um, it's, it's going really well, and it's a key hire. It's part of the leadership team. Um, it really um, has a lot of efforts that work for the employees um, forward. It pushes all that forward, so it's, it's great to have somebody now working um, and advocating for the employees and what they need. Is that, so that position for Kelly, so welcome Kelly, and uh, is that for the, what I'll call the town side staff, or does that also incorporate the school It does staff? incorporate the benefit part, so we provide benefits for the schools as well. We do town and schools for benefits, so all, anyone that's an employee of town, if they have any benefit, it runs through the HR department, which is um, on the town side. So 
Yes, it, it's a lot. It's a lot of work, and uh, Kelly is doing great. Okay. Well, welcome, welcome, Kelly. And yeah. uh, and we have there's a new there's a new sheriff in town. Yeah. There's a new treasurer. A new town. treasurer is going to be coming on. She starts um, Who's next, that? next week. Um, Leslie. She she derives from Linfield. She um she's been the town treasurer. Or she has been a treasurer for about 11 years. She's been in the town of Linfield for about three. Um, she, you know, we posted the position rather quickly after the, um, it changed in April from yeah, the appointed vote. to, yeah. So we, we posted that job about a week after the vote and her application came in and uh, yeah, she's, she has the wealth of knowledge experience and she's gonna be able to come in, you know, and just start start right away and it's it's really good um currently my assistant town administrator has been doing the job of treasurer and it, it's a lot of work you know transitions hard anyway from from mm -hmm. for a department especially one that where um, floyd carmen was in that position for almost 17 years Maybe i think 18, 17, yeah 18 so years. It, it's a it it's transition is hard in and of itself um, but now we're really just trying to move the department forward. So I think it, we're building our finance team, and it's really been going really well. We, we have some good additions, and I think everyone's going to work really well together. So Jennifer Hewitt, uh, Assistant Town Administrator slash Finance Director slash Acting Treasurer, yep. is losing one of the slashes. She's losing one of the losing slashes. Losing that. Yep. That's so, and she'll be able to be the Finance Director, which is really um, how she was, she was hired as the assistant slash finance director, which has uh, really been helping with the budgeting and the, the presentations and the communications um, to the town. Well, she was very, very eloquent at town meeting yeah. when, when called up. I don't know if she knew that part to be part <laughs> of the job description, but, uh, yep. but she uh, entered the fray and yes, she did. acquitted herself quite nicely. Okay, we got about, I don't know, a minute and a half left, so. Uh, employee spotlights, that's a nice addition to uh, the program. You've highlighted people in the past, but who are the last recent uh, employee spotlights? Maybe so the, I just, I started it, I think the turn of the year. The first one I um, highlighted was Michael Santoro um, and the, he's the assistant DBW director, um, had a very nice write up. It, it's an opportunity for people in the community to get to know some of the people they don't necessarily interact with. Um, the second person was Heidi Barbero. She works in the recreation department. She's been here for a very long time. And, and then the last one after that was Pam Callahan in my office. Um, so it's really an opportunity for people to, to see the workers in town and, and, and get to know them a little bit on the personal side. And it, it's a nice addition. And then the employees really have taken to it. They really, they really like it. Well, a, a, sh a shout out for that. And, uh, you can see the employee spotlight, I think, in the Belmont Bulletin. In my town administrator bulletin. Town yep. administrator bulletin. Yep. Again, belmont-ma.gov. Gov. Look yep. under town administration. Town yep. And uh, there you have it. You'll be able to see those people. Who's? And we have someone coming up. He's the driver of the Belder bus. The Belder bus, Marty. Yep. He'll be in Jul um July, we had to miss June because of town meeting, everything kind of got pushed back right. a little bit. Well, we'll look for Marty. I yeah. see him driving around, so. Uh, yep. And, yep. Uh, you know, he hasn't lost any passions yet, <laughs> so I suppose that's a good thing. No, he, he, yep, look for that. So, uh, okay, so, well, we've covered a whole bunch of stuff here. I think uh, we're pretty much out of time or getting there. So, any final, any final, what do you got for the summer? You got any plans for yourself? Unfortunately, no, I'm actually... What? Come on, I'll yeah. work and no play makes Patrice a dull girl. You know, I, I hope to get to the beach. I am a fan of the beach, so hopefully I'll get, get there sometime this summer. But well, nothing, nothing major planned. Nothing major planned. No. Well, the town will just roll along. <laughs> I hope you at least take a couple of days yes, and I'll go be taking uh, a couple of days. Uh, recreate a little bit. You, yeah. you know, this, this is all you need. Oh, I agree. Although, you know, I'm sure it's just every day's a day in paradise here at Town Hall. As everyone knows in town, I'm just waiting for the warm weather. That's all I'm waiting well, for. Well, they tell me it's coming. They tell me it's coming this week. It's supposed to be hot and muggy, yeah, albeit it's... rainy with, with, with thunderstorms. But, yeah, uh, this is not my kind of weather. What are you going to do? Anyway, that's it for this edition of uh, the Belmont Bulletin. want to thank... Uh, Matt Simonelli and of course Jim H Jeff Hansel. Matt's, I believe, the producer, and they got Jeff here behind the, the big honcho behind the cameras. And of course, I want to thank our town administrator, Patrice Gavin, uh, for her time and uh, her comments and her, uh, 
general conversation, keeping us up to date as to what's happening here in the town of Belmont. Until next time, I'm your host, Steve Rosales. Take care.